It's been kind of um, ups and downs, lots of anger and hurt, and I'm sure especially on Greg's part. Reaction flooding in tonight from supporters of Greg Kelly, convicted three years ago for sexually assaulting a four-year-old boy, but maintaining his innocence all along. Tonight, that conviction being called into question as prosecutors identify a new suspect in the case. Much of the reaction pouring in now on social media under the hashtags fight for GK and pray for GK. Tweets such as finally after four years praying that the truth finally comes out and it's been a long time coming. Let's bring him home. We'll hear from those closest to Greg shortly as we bring you team coverage tonight. But we begin with KVU and Austin American statesman Tony Plohetsky, who broke this story on KVU and KVU.com this morning. Tony, new court documents reveal some crucial new details in this case. Well, Mike and Quita, as we have been reporting, the conviction of Greg Kelly is being called into question and a new suspect has been identified in court records and confirmed by, by Williamson County District Attorney Sean Dick. Here is what we know. The new suspect's name is Jonathan McCarty. Today in Williamson County, he was arrested on a probation violation charge. He is in jail right now with his bail set at $450,000. Now, according to these newly unsealed court documents written by Kelly's defense team, McCarty's cell phone and computer had images of very young naked children that he thought had been deleted. People who apparently had seen the pictures are willing to testify about their, quote, visceral reactions. It also reveals that he told someone at a party after Kelly's conviction that he, in fact, was the person who assaulted the child, not Greg Kelly. The records also say that the state's top sex offender expert evaluated Kelly and concluded that he had no signs of being a child rapist. Again, McCarty has not been charged with this crime, but he does remain under investigation by the Williamson County District Attorney's Office and the Texas Rangers. Mike. All right, thanks, Tony. And again, we are emphasizing that new suspect, Jonathan McCarty, is in jail tonight on unrelated drug charges. Williamson County jail records online show he has been arrested and booked into jail more than a dozen times just this year. Most of the charges, possession of a controlled substance and another for having a prohibited weapon. So what's next for Greg Kelly and the case against him? His defense attorney, Keith Hampton, laid it all out this afternoon, saying they are set for a hearing this August. If, if other evidence develops before August the 3rd that, that, that absolutely locks this down, where no one is, could possibly believe him to be guilty, then there is a mechanism for us to expedite things and I will ask that that be done. We're also hearing tonight from Greg Kelly's close friends and family. Our team coverage continues with KVU's Chris Betts. Chris? Well, Quita, I'm here at Leander High School. This is where Greg Kelly was a student and athlete with that man, Jonathan McCarty, that police are now investigating for the sexual assault of a child. I'm told that Greg Kelly is a man of faith and he would never point a finger at someone since he didn't personally witness the sexual assault, so his family tells me. They also told me today while sitting down with Greg Kelly's mother that they were suspicious of McCarty from the start. Um, we weren't surprised about that from the beginning. We knew that the physical resemblance between Jonathan and Greg, and we knew that it was a strong possibility that Jonathan was the one that was in question. Family also tells me that Jonathan McCarty was never questioned during the investigation or the trial. Coming up tonight at 10, we'll hear more about how Greg Kelly's life has changed while he's been in prison these past few years and the big plans he has for if and when he is released. For now, live in Leander, Chris Betts, KVU News. Chris, thank you. And more emotion today from Kelly's longtime girlfriend, Gabby Anderson. She spoke to us via FaceTime and she says she'll continue to stand by Greg's side. I mean, I'm going to stick by him till the very end through everything. Um, and I just, I keep praying, keep fighting, and uh, I really do believe that the truth is going to come out and justice will be served. 
This case has been playing out for nearly four years now. Greg Kelly was arrested in August 2013. Over the course of the next year, prosecutors offered him a plea deal that would have kept him out of jail, but he refused. Kelly went to trial in July 2014 and was convicted of super aggravated sexual assault of a child. The sentence, 25 years in prison, no chance of parole. Kelly was then transferred to Huntsville, where not long after his conviction, he had this to say to the victim's family. So what about that testimony from a four-year-old implicating Greg Kelly? KVU's Nicole Rosales is in the newsroom. She talked to a retired judge today about the use of children's testimony in these types of cases. Nicole? That retired judge called it right crime, wrong perpetrator. So that means a person or child was a victim of crime, but identified the wrong person. Former Court of Criminal Appeals Judge Charles Baird says that could have happened in Greg Kelly's case. Baird says these types of cases happen a lot more often than most may think. He goes on to say there are a number of reasons why children make false allegations or the allegations are true, but due to emotional trauma or stress or the age, in fact, it could affect their perspective. And it's tricky because when you're the lawyer representing the person accused, you want to make sure that he or she gets his day in court. But in a situation like this, I believe that jurors are necessarily biased in favor of a child, uh, especially the younger the child, the more that bias is. And therefore, it, it takes away the ability of the lawyer for the citizen accused to co actively confront and cross-examine that child. Baird also says with a new team in Williamson County investigating, it would seem to guarantee a full, fair review of the circumstances. And if, in fact, another person committed the assault, that Kelly would receive relief from an appeals court. In the newsroom, Nicole Rosales, KV News. Thanks, Nicole. We reached out to Cedar Park Police today. They conducted the original investigation into the Kelly case. Chief Sean Mannix released this statement, quote, We are a nation of laws, and I believe in the due process of law. This is part of that process. It doesn't change my opinion of the trial or the outcome. We remain focused on upholding justice for the sexual assault survivor in this case. Missteps in high-profile criminal cases are nothing new to Williamson County. They go back three decades to when Michael Morton was convicted of murdering his wife. Morton served 25 years in prison before he was exonerated in 2011. The district attorney who prosecuted Morton, Ken Anderson, served jail time and was disbarred for withholding evidence that could have cleared Morton. Then there's the murder case of Rex Nisbet. A jury convicted him in 2014 of murdering his wife in the early 1990s. But an appeals court ruled last year there wasn't enough evidence to prove he killed her. Nisbet's appeal is still in the works. And another murder case, that of Crispin Harmel, ended in a mistrial when a judge ruled prosecutors withheld evidence from defense attorneys. It's the same case that led to a 10-day jail sentence for former district attorney Jana Duty for violating a gag order. The Harmel and Nisbet cases now fall to DA Sean Dick to clear up as well as now getting to the bottom of the Greg Kelly case. And we will continue to follow developments in the Greg Kelly case as they unfold. Stay with us on the KVU mobile app, Facebook and KVU.com.